AMD developed a power savings technology called PowerNow for their K62 and K63 mobile processors. It is similar to Intel's SpeedStep and reduces the clock frequency and core voltage of the CPU when the laptop is idle. The main goal of this technology was to save battery power, but it also helped reducing heat generated by the CPU and consequently a reduction in fan noise. But unfortunately, we cannot enable power now on regular desktop computers, because the BIOS as well as the operating system had to support it. Have you ever wondered how low we can set the voltage of a K63 Plus and bring the benefits of power now partially to the desktop? This is what I will try to accomplish in today's video. The CPU for this experiment is the AMD K62 Plus 570. You may have seen in the thumbnail that this is no ordinary CPU. This CPU has an unlocked level 2 cache of 256 kilobytes in total and I have added a temperature sensor next to the CPU die. If you're interested, there is a video on my channel where I show the entire modification process. The temperature sensor will be of great use today when we are undervolting this CPU. Hopefully we will see how the voltage and temperature are related with each other. But that is not all. I plugged the power supply into an electrical power meter. This device measures the power in watts drawn from the power socket. Of course this is the power consumed by the entire system, but it should give us some additional information. Since I already have some data from undervolting a Pentium 2 400, I would like to see how low we can set the voltage for this AMD CPU at a frequency of 400 MHz. And yes, I know the Pentium 2 was released 2 years earlier and was manufactured using the larger 250 nanometer process. I just thought it might be interesting to see an undervolt of both CPUs at the same frequency. So I think I'm done justifying why I clocked the AMD K62 Plus at 400 MHz for the first part of this video. But don't worry, I will also check higher frequencies and their respective lowest voltage. The motherboard I'm using for these tests is the DFI K6 BV3 Plus 66. I got this motherboard with a broken socket but I was able to fix it and it works great since then. To keep the power draw to a minimum, any extras like a sound card are not present. And the Matrox Millennium 2 will have the honor to provide us with sharp VGA output. To test for stability, I will boot into Windows, run the CPU C benchmark twice and load up Prime95 for another 10 minute stress test. You will probably say that 10 minutes is not enough to test for stability, and I agree. But since I will not use this system for anything important, 10 to 15 minutes is all the time I am willing to invest for each test run. For the first two tests, I will configure the motherboard to supply the stock voltage to the CPU. At 2 volts and 600 MHz, which is the maximum frequency I can set on the DFI board, the temperature reaches 52 degrees Celsius. I could literally feel the heat the CPU generated at those settings. Thinking about those CPUs sitting in old AT cases with little to no airflow is quite concerning. Let's move on to the next test. I left everything unchanged except for the multiplier which I have reduced from 6 to 4. The CPU is now operating at a frequency of 400 MHz. We can see that the temperature decreases by almost 8 degrees Celsius. I did a bit of research why there is a power drop when we decrease the frequency. And here is what I could find. Transistors generate heat when they switch state. If they switch less frequently, less heat is generated and less power is consumed. This is what we can observe here. For the next couple of tests, the CPU frequency will remain at 400 MHz. The voltage is the one that I am going to reduce until we see instability. I don't expect any issues running the CPU at 1.7 volts, considering that we have dropped the frequency to 400 MHz. And surely, it did complete all tests without issues. The temperature decreased by another 5.5 degrees Celsius and is now below 40 degrees. Let's make the next decrease in voltage a bit smaller and only drop by 0.2 volts. Now the CPU is running at 1.5 volts. The temperature drops again and the CPU sits now at a cool 35.5 degrees Celsius. The next voltage reduction brings us to 1.4 volts. We are very close to the minimum voltage this board is capable to supply to the CPU. 
The drop in temperature is less than 2 degrees, probably because I reduced the voltage by 0.1 volts only. At 34 degrees Celsius, the CPU is now over 10 degrees cooler than running the CPU with 2 volts at the same frequency. We can go one step lower, to 1.3 volts. The CPU is still stable at this voltage and completes all tests without issues. The temperature drops by one more degree to the lowest value of 33. We have reached the lowest voltage setting I can configure on this motherboard. Now let's switch and have a look at the total power consumption. This chart looks like it's a copy of the temperature chart. You get almost identical drops for each step. I won't go into details for each configuration again, but here are the combined values of temperature and power consumption in one chart. We can see how the temperature and the power consumption are closely related. But enough testing at 400 MHz. Let's increase the frequency and see how low we can keep the voltage for the CPU to remain stable. For the upcoming tests I had to change the graphics card, because additionally to CPU-C and Prime95, I also wanted to complete one race in Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed. The Matrix Millennium 2 will be replaced by a graphics card that I recently recovered by flashing its BIOS. The Elsa Synergy 2 is a TNT2 based graphics card and has a higher power consumption compared to the Millennium 2. So in the upcoming charts, the overall power draw will be higher than in the previous charts. The DFI board does not have good overclocking capabilities and I'm limited to multiplier changes only. Therefore, I can increase the frequency in 50 MHz steps only. We already know that the CPU is stable at 1.3 volts and a frequency of 400 MHz. Nevertheless, I still completed all the tests including one race in Porsche Unleashed. So let's increase the frequency to 450 MHz and leave the CPU at a voltage of 1.3 volts. The CPU is still stable and can complete the tests without issues. The temperature increases a little bit compared to the measurement I got at 400 MHz. We probably would have had a bit more room to the downside at 400 MHz if we weren't limited to 1.3 volts by the motherboard. Moving on to 500 MHz. And here I was not able to run the tests at 1.3 volts. I had to slightly increase the voltage to 1.35 volts. The temperature increased by 2 degrees Celsius. At 550 MHz I had to increase the voltage to 1.5. Anything lower and Windows said goodbye with a blue screen. But at 1.5 volts all tests completed successfully. The temperature increased slightly again to 37 degrees Celsius. For the next test, I increased the frequency by only 20 to 570 MHz. This is the stock frequency of this AMD K62+. Let's see what the minimum voltage is to run the CPU at its rated speed. I ran into some issues when I left the voltage at 1.5 volts. Windows wouldn't boot and I just got an endless Windows loading screen. But once I increased the voltage a little bit to 1.55 volts, all tests passed. The temperature is now at 38 degrees Celsius. Let's move on to the final test, 600 MHz. This is the maximum frequency I can configure on the DFI board. The absolute minimum voltage where I could finish the tests was 1.7 volts. The temperature increases by 3 degrees to 41 degrees Celsius. This is still lower than running the CPU at its stock voltage and a frequency of 400 MHz. 600 MHz combined with the stock voltage will increase the temperature to 52 degrees. We have already seen this temperature when we have tested with the Millennium 2. But let's look at it this way. By undervolting the K62 Plus running at a frequency of 600 MHz and a voltage of 1.7, you could reduce the temperature by over 10 degrees without sacrificing performance. Let's have a look at the power draw. 
Again we can see that the power consumption of the entire system mimics the temperature graph. We can save 9 watts by undervolting the CPU and still run it at a frequency of 600 MHz. Finally, here are once more temperature and power consumption in one chart. And this is all I have for you in this video. Three, two, one, go! Would you have expected that we could undervolt this CPU by that much? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed the content, please give this video a like. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.